Hello, welcome to Vascular Tissues in Plants, a presentation by Group X for Biology 1520 by Rainey Baskowitz, Brian Coffey, Cambry Mabry, and Addie Newman. Trees and other vascular plants have transportation systems and the xylem and phloem make them up. As you all know, plants have a top and a bottom. The top has a trunk, branches, and leaves, and the bottom has the root system. The top and the bottom need each other to survive and work together to provide the trees with all the nutrient it needs. The roots have all the nutrients from the soil, and the top is in the light, conducting photosynthesis and helping the plant with reproduction. But the two parts have to be connected, and that is where the xylem and phloem come in. The xylem of a plant is a complex tissue of a system that transports cells and circulate water and dissolved material. Its movement is unidirectional as it moves up the plant stem. It gives mechanical strength to the plant due to presence of lignin cells. As a plant, you have roots that are there to help you absorb water, but if your leaves are 100 feet off the ground, what are you going to do? This is a perfect time for xylem to take action. Xylem occupies the center of the vascular bundle and is made of vessels that are connected end-to-end -end for maximum speed for water to move as quickly as possible. Capillary action causes the pull to water molecules below and it involves surface tension, adhesion, and cohesion. Also, the lignified secondary wall of the xylem makes it waterproof to prevent the plant from collapsing under the pressure of water transpiration. Since the fun never stops in a plant's circulatory system, the phloem plays a major role in transportation of food and nutrients as well. Phloem's main function is translocation, which is a movement of substances such as amino acids and sugars from leaves to storage organs. Its movement is bidirectional. Phloem has walled sieve tubes, which have pores at each end in the cross walls, and microtubules that extend between sieve elements, allowing longitudinal flow of material. Phloem actively transport nutrients via the pressure flow model. Phloem is always alive, unlike xylem tissue, which dies. Think of the dripping sap that comes out of a tree. That's a result of phloem. As you might expect from this introduction, xylem and phloem play a role in vascular botany. So scientist Baskowitz and I spoke to scientist Coffey, the director of vascular botany at the Georgia Institute of Technology, to find out what we know so far about vascular transportation systems. Hello, it is my pleasure to tell you all about my colleagues' studies published in Science Magazine. Scientist Coffee, could you give me an example of how materials are transported by phloem through the plant? Well, you need to remember that the hormone auxin is also actively transported via the phloem. A study was conducted to determine how aspen trees redistribute the hormone auxin in response to a wound to its vascular tissue. The study determined that aspen trees redistribute the hormone auxin after wounding. Whoa, that's so interesting. Can you tell me more about the discoveries of that study? Like, how did auxin heal the tree? Xylem and phloem are formed from the daughter cells of the meristematic vascular cambium. The elongated fusiform initial cells become oriented in a way that is viewable by the naked eye in the grain pattern of wood. While the pattern remains generally constant throughout the life of a tree, a study was conducted to determine whether the initials can reorient in response to external effects on the tree, such as an injury. It concluded that a grain undergoing a reorientation is the result of a concentration gradient of the plant hormone auxin in response to an injury. How did they even find this out? Well, an experiment was conducted on quaking aspens. Five samples of pre-wounded cambium tissue were collected for each of eight experiments on five separate trees. About 150 samples of post-wound tissue were collected from the trees. The auxin content, as well as the grain orientation of the post-wound tissue, was compared with the pre-wound tissue. Auxin was found to concentrate in a zone above the wound and was depleted below the wound. 
This indicated that a concentration gradient was established below the lower edge of the wound. Upon dissection of these zones, the grain was shown to be rotating at an average rate of 0.5 degrees per day, eventually rotating by more than 45 degrees. Reorientation of the grain outside of these zones was much slower. Thus, it was established that oxen gradients at the site of the wound are correlated with cambial reorientation, implicating a role for oxen and grain patterning. That was Scientist Coffee from the Georgia Institute of Technology. Another study has been conducted to examine why trees don't bleed to death when they get injured. Scientist Baskowitz is going to explain this phenomenon to us. It's a pleasure to be here and explain my colleague's study to you. Basically, injuries can include injury by insect or being dried, like what happens with kiln-dried dried lumber. In this study, scientists use a special microscope to observe nanostructures and their role in containing damage in bordered pits in wood fiber cells. Border pits are the cavities in wood fiber cells that allow sap to flow through adjacent cells. Through using a laser scanning microscope, scientists in this study discovered that border pits are filled with a membrane of nanofibrils that spread from a region in the tree called the torus. Scientist Baskowitz, can you tell me more about the study? Of course. The torus is the region where fluids, such as sap, go through after going through the membrane of the bordered pit. After going through the torus, the fluids go out the other side. During injury to wood, the torus and a part of the membrane both shift from the center of the bordered pit to one side to seal the opening. Chemicals were used to dye pectin and cellulose, and this procedure showed that pectin surrounds the torus to form a fringe that seals off the cells. That way, the tree won't bleed to death. Without involvement of pectin, a tree would be unable to defend itself because it would not be able to seal off these damaged cells. Scientists speculate that the pectin acts as a buffer during deformation of the bordered pit membrane and prevents cellulose strands from detaching from the cell wall. See, vascular transportation systems can be interesting and even fun. Plant tissues are extraordinarily resilient and adaptive. We see this in how the phloem performs its regular duties of transporting nutrients, but also transport hormones to help heal a plant. We hope you enjoyed this podcast.